Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 and verse 3. I will stand up upon my watch. I will set me on the tower to, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Do it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Welcome to service number two in the second service. The first service was the service of the song. Now, pursuing purpose and vision, part two. That is the subject. Pursuing purpose and vision. We want to understand what it takes to pursue vision and purpose. It is important to know that vision is the tonic of life. Because Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 said, where there is no vision, the people perish. Vision is the value of life. Purpose and vision. The absence of vision is the devaluation of life. Where people are visionless, they are valueless. Where people are visionless, they are worthless. The meaning of where there is no vision, people perish according to what I heard from God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko. It's where there is no vision. People perish means people are stripped of honor and dignity. Most people you see in prisons and drug and jail houses are people who are visionless. So they just aimlessly existed until they found themselves in jail. You will never be like that. Of course, we have known that vision is the discovery of God's plan and purpose for your life. And once that has been discovered, it must be pursued. Why must vision be pursued? First, to pursue is to pressurize unto fulfillment. When you, you are pursuing you are putting pressure onto fulfillment. Pursuit is a survival strategy for vision. I heard that one morning in East Africa, an, an antelope wakes up with a vow that he must run faster than the fastest lion. Otherwise, it would end in the stomach of the lion. And the lion wakes up with the vow that he must run faster than the fastest antelope. Otherwise, he dies of hunger. Antelope wants to run so that he doesn't die in the end in the stomach of the lion. Lion wants to run so that he doesn't die of hunger. The question is, when the day breaks, it doesn't matter whether you are a lion or an antelope just hit the road running. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that, that's what I mean by saying it's a survival strategy. It's, a, it's the strategy for the survival of the vision is to be on the run. To pursue is to pressurize unto fulfillment. Secondly, what is not pursued cannot be possessed. Hunters know this. What is not pursued cannot be possessed. Vision unpursued is vision unpossessed. 
It doesn't matter how big that vision is. If it cannot be pursued, it cannot be possessed. Finally, what is not pursued may not be possible. Possibility is a child of pursuit. Until David decided to dare Goliath, he didn't know it was possible to pull him down. People never knew that Goliath was pullable. What is not pursued may not be possible. Having said all that, what is the process for the pursuit of vision? There is a process that leads to the pursuit. The Bible says, write the vision. So number one, write the vision. I dealt extensively with this in the first service. But I said that the documentation of vision is what produces the vitality of it. So the other way, the vitality of vision Vision receives vitality when it is documented. The life of the vision, the oxygen of the vision is in the writing. Men of vision are men of pen and paper. Vision runners are vision writers. I haven't seen any great man of vision who doesn't write voraciously. Right. Vision receives vitality when it is documented. Secondly, we said that vision or purpose is only reviewable and pursuable when it is documented. You can only review it, pursue it after it has been documented. And thirdly, we said that vision can only gain motion with documentation. We dealt with all this in the first service. Number two, if the vision must come to pass, you must review the vision. Review the vision. That it may run that rate it. Reviewing the vision facilitates the comprehension of the vision. Because listen to this. What is not comprehended can never be apprehended. What is not comprehended can never be apprehended. You can't achieve what you don't understand. You can't achieve what you don't understand. So, reviewing the vision, three things we said. First of all, reviewing the vision causes a deepening of the understanding of the vision. While Peter taught on the vision, the Holy Ghost said, Acts chapter 10 verse 19. While Peter taught on the vision, as he was reviewing the vision, what vision is this? What did I just hear? What did I just see? Then he began to receive understanding from the spirit. Reviewing the vision causes a deepening of the understanding of the vision. Secondly, we said, reviewing the vision causes a refueling or a refiring of passion. Something boils in your heart. Every time I come in to preach, on top of my sermon note before the introduction is the vision statement. That is, I must understand why I'm standing here. I must understand why I am standing here. I am not in, in a lecture room. I am not in a, a cinema hall. I am not in, I am not in a theater for drama. <laughs> Is on top of my note now. You see, vision, mission, goal. All that is here before you. I, I wrote the objective of the preaching. It 
it, it just fuels you with passion. Revealing the vision causes a refueling and a refiring of passion. And thirdly, we said that reviewing the vision facilitates action on the vision. It facilitates action on the vision. That we dealt with all that in the first service. Now I will deal with number three and four in detail in this service. So, write the vision. Review the vision. Number three, plan the vision. Plan the vision. Vision without a plan. It's either a daydream or wishful thinking. Where there is vision without a plan, it is either daydream or wishful thinking. I want to have first class, graduate with a first class, without a plan. Is just entertainment talk. That talk is only for entertainment value. <laughs> Papa Yedevo said one day somebody came to his house and he said that he wants to run for president of the country. And he said, okay, well, you know, see, there are people who, many people who want to run for president. But the question is, are they presidential material? Both in mentality and in everything. So by the time they finish talking, he's escorting them and say, he asks him, where did you park your car? He said, oh no, I'll take a taxi now. He wants to be president. You have not managed your life to the point where you can have an ordinary car and you want to be president. You know that that is an, entertain an entertainer. Some enter the race for entertainment. So that there can be entertainment in the whole process. Where people fail to plan, they have planned to fail. You know that already. Please take note of three things concerning planning. And let me say this. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not an excuse for planlessness. There are people whose lives are scattered. You say, what are you doing? You say, the Holy Ghost will lead. It's as if I should come up here this morning and somebody asked me what what sermon did you prepare? I said, no, I didn't prepare nothing. I, I, once I, I will just be ministering by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I will open my mouth and the Holy Ghost will fill it. And then I will speak to the people. But the Holy Ghost will fill it and probably fill it with air. There are people whose lives are so scattered all in the name of the Holy Spirit. Who just don't want the Holy Spirit to walk. You have a wedding date, yes, or any plans yet? It just depend on the Holy Spirit. How? <laughs> this is a waste of life. The Holy Ghost is not against planning. In fact, the number one law of creation was the law of the plan. When God started creating, he had a plan. If you saw the systematic way in which the creation happened, you know it wasn't planlessness. First of all, everywhere the whole earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness was everywhere. As the Spirit of God moved, God said the first thing to do is to turn the light on. Everywhere is dark. We can't see anything. Light be. Then the light came on. Oh, Wow. Earth and water are together. Sky and earth are all joined together. Not so. Earth, move. Water, move. 
All right, hey, it's better. Let earth be on one side, water be on another side. Okay, now sky and earth are together. Sky move up. Good. Earth remain here. Good. Now, whatever is inside the earth, come out. Whatever is in the water, come out. The things in the sky fly. Uh -huh. He couldn't have said that if the earth and the water were mixed and the sky and the earth were mixed and then, and then everything was dark. Then when everything was said, he said, now let me make the king. He didn't make man on day one before he made the plant. Otherwise, man would have been hungry for six days. Waiting for when the plant will be, will, will be created. Plan. When he had five loaves and two fishes, and there were 5,000 men beside women and children, he said, let the people sit down first. They are too hungry to be served in standing position. <laughs> Can you control hungry men who are standing? If they, they sat, he said, now, group them. They group them in 50s. It's all right. Select a person to administer to each group. I will give to you 12. You give to those people. Those people will give to them. When it arrives in the group, if they like, let them, let them rush it. Strategic plan. And it was enough. Wedding in Canaan of Galilee, the pots were according to the manner of, they, there were set pots. Fill it with water. Listen. The closer you get to God, the wiser you become in life. Stupidity is only a sign of distance from God. <laughs> Take your seat. The, the wiser you, the, the more organized, the more coordinated your life will be. Somebody say amen. So what does planning achieve for the sake of time? One, planning breaks the vision into achievable bits and parts. Achieve, achievable bits and parts. If there are 500,000 souls that we must reach and there are 50,000 home cells that have 10 souls in them each, that is 500,000. Achievable parts and bits. You don't eat an elephant completely and just start destroying. No. You break it down. Inside your system, the digestive enzymes dissolve, dematerialize, disintegrate what you swallowed for it to be beneficial to your body. When a little baby swallows corn, as he swallowed it, so will it come out. It's useless to his body because it wasn't broken. Everything in life is achievable if it can be broken down. I want to trust God for one million dollars per year. That translates to how much per month? That translates to how much per week? And if how it is translated to is possible and you are able to say, oh, if I am able to trust God for an income of so and so a week, then by the end of the year I can be able to achieve this. So you are now focusing on the week. Because what you are to achieve in a week is easier than what, how big it is per year. Am I communicating? Planning breaks the vision down into achievable bits and parts. Number two, planning identifies options available for the actualization of the vision. Options. I want to go from 
the glory, the Lord's garden on the airport road to Metama Abuja, what options exist? What are the various ways in which I can go? I want to reach Los Angeles, California the fastest possible way. What flight options exist by British Airways, by Lufthansa, by any of the airways? Which of the flight schedule and connection gives me the shortest time to reach there? You identify options, available options. I am going to achieve this. Can I identify 20 ways in which I can achieve this? So, way number one, two, three, four. Planning impacts on mentality. And when the mind is put to work, ideas are harvested. Planning. What, what are the options? Life is full of alternatives and options. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 says, Stand in the way at the junction. You know, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? So, so there are ways, but which one is the way? That is planning. These are the options to the things I want. You can identify them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But which is the best option? That is planning. Number three, planning gives room for changes of approach where and when necessary. Changes of approach where and when necessary. I have walked on this path and it doesn't seem to be working out but there is another path too that can take me there in the journey of vision vision is fixed but planning is flexible the vision is fixed the plan is flexible the vision is a constant. The plan is a variable. Vision may not change, but plan may change. I need to win 100,000 souls to Christ. Maybe within the next how many months. I can go about it through radio and television. I can go about it through the internet. I can go about it through one-to-one -one evangelism. And I can go about it through all those means. Somebody say amen. I prophesy upon someone today. Grace to do it right. Is released upon you. In Jesus precious name. Plan the vision. Number four. Pursue the vision. Pursue the vision. What does it mean to pursue? Now this is the real topic now. What does it mean to pursue the vision? Pursuit is giving motion to the vision through massive action. You are giving motion to the vision through massive action. You are not sitting down waiting for things to happen. You make them happen. You don't wait for good things to happen to you. You happen to good things. Giving motion what must be done must be done massively. So you are giving massive motion, action so that the vision, that was number one.
first pursuit is giving motion to the vision through massive action. The reason why our results are not the same is because most times, all things being equal, our efforts are not the same. So we don't have the same effect. Second, pursuit is covering grounds and meeting goals towards the actualization of the vision. Covering grounds, meeting goals. I want to win two souls a week so I can have eight souls a month so I can have 96 souls a year or 100 a year. And then you are just ensuring that what you need to do per week, you are doing it. What you need to do per week, you are doing it. You are covering grounds and you are meeting goals. You are not thinking of what you are going to do as a whole year yet. You are just, this is what I need to do weekly. And you are doing it weekly. You are doing it weekly. You are doing it weekly. At the end of the year, you will realize you didn't need to bother about the week. Listen. About the year. Somebody gave a little child a newspaper that had the map of the world. I think this was the map of the world at the back. And the map was cut. And the paper was just cut and shredded. And the little child is wondering, what do I do? To put, and they ask him, put the map together. Unknown to him. At the back of the paper was the picture, the painting of a man. The other side was the map that was in pieces. The other side was the man. And he looked and realized all I need to do is to fix the man on this side and that will take care of the map on the other side. And when the man was put together, face, head, everything fixed on the other side, there was no struggle to put it together. If you fix the man, you could fix, you could fix the world. That's how vision is. If you take care of the goals, the goals will take care of the vision. Am I, on, am I, am I communicating? All you need is to just understand what goals am I to set. What am I to do if I am to achieve this overall vision? Take care of the goals and the goals will take care of the vision. It's incredible. Attend to the goals and the goals will attend to the vision. Somebody has gotten one missing link you've been looking for all these years. Attend to the goals. What is pursuit? Finally, pursuit is operating with the sense of urgency towards the realization of the vision. The sense of urgency. Sense of urgency. You are working with timelines and schedules. Working with timelines and schedules in pursuit. You know that you don't have eternity to fulfill destiny. You know that you don't have forever to do what you need to do with your life. And you know that it takes urgency to fulfill destiny. That's pursuit. So, write the vision. Review the vision. Plan the vision. And pursue the vision. Number five is be patient with the vision. Does this sound opposite to the last one? No. While you are pursuing, 
if the vision is not appearing to come to pass on time, don't give up. Don't give up. You are in the process of pursuit and it appears like the vision is not coming to pass as you planned it. Don't give up. Be patient with the vision. Nothing wears out resistance like persistence. It wears out resistance. And finally, exercise faith for the fulfillment of the vision. Anywhere God must be involved, faith must be involved. Faith. The just shall live by his faith. God said it. I believed it. That said, oh, say. God said it. I believe it. That said, oh, say. God said it. I believe it. That said, oh, say. God said it. I believe it. That said, oh, it. two or three shall agree as touching a thing and it shall be established when God says this is my plan for you he's asking you do you agree when you say I agree with you then the devil is a bastard I agree with you then no force on earth or hell can stop you vision requires faith it requires faith. Please note that every vision is time sensitive. Visions are for an appointed time. Every vision. Meaning of it is every time you are asking God what is your plan for my life also be sensitive to the timing of the plan. I began to know that God will use me as a pastor or at least to affect my generation to touch lives maybe 10 years before I received the full-time call to ministry. There was a time interval. When I got to know that my wife was going to be my wife when I knew was not the time that I was to rush at her. It took me like six months. Check, cross check, be sure. And also to ask God to speak to the other person. Because the way I am, I don't have the time for somebody to say I'm not sure. That, no, people are different. There are those who, will be, who people can be doing them, guy. I don't have that time. <laughs> so, so I wanted the matter settled on the other side first before I go. It's better to wait and it be settled <laughs> than to rush and you are unsettled. So visions are for an appointed time. Any farming you want to do in dry season is either irrigation farming or frustration farming. <laughs> Am I speaking at all? It makes all things beautiful in its time. There are people who rushed at what God is saying, and it, now look at Moses. God hinted him that he was going to deliver Israel and he thought it was immediate. And he rushed to do it and he jammed coconut. And he ran away from the vision Gabadiah completely, totally for 40 years. He ran, he abandoned it. First, he went before time. And then secondly, he left it completely. He makes all things beautiful. In his time. You shall not miss your timing. You will not miss your timing. One man went to a lady and said, God said I should marry you. 
or rather, I want to marry you, whatever. I, can't, I don't know how he said it. And the lady said she's not convinced. He returned back 10 years later, thereabout. And the lady was convinced. And they married. They have grown up children now. I don't know, maybe he ran before it was time to go and say anything. He makes all things beautiful in his time. You won't miss your time. I said you won't miss the timing. In conclusion, it is not enough to possess vision. It is important to pursue it. Pursue it. And secondly, purpose and vision, they don't get fulfilled in a day. Faith and persistence are required in their fulfillment. Purpose and vision don't get fulfilled in a day. Faith and persistence are required in their fulfillment. It's a new day for somebody. If you are that person, you will say a loud amen. amen. If you are that person, you will say a louder amen. amen. Did somebody receive something today at all? Did you receive some clarification at all? Then you will stand up on your feet in the shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. The loud most shout of praise. Look at somebody say, you will not miss it. Say, in the name of Jesus, you will not miss it. You will not miss the time. You will not miss the appointment. In the name of Jesus, you are already out of the pit. The delay is over. That is why you have a new song. Shout the loudest, Amen.